When I came from Germany 30 some years ago, I realized on the East Coast I did not see so much First Nation culture and I didn't know why that was the case. I believe it's very important that First Nations get more recognition in North America and the world and so that's a big part of what we're doing here. We bring our old ancestors' ways into today, just to keep that alive. The meaning behind my art would be about the residential school survivors and missing and murdered indigenous women. I talk about things that are happening in my life at the moment. My spirit name is uh, Meskeke No Den, which is medicine wing. So then when I have my name, I felt like I have to share whatever I know and teach the young kids. Friends United is reviving our culture back. Here you feel supported and nurtured. Like we all, at some point in our life, need that moment that somebody says, I believe in you. The center just helps us be a community within just artists. Friends United is a team of many people with the same idea to work together constructively to honor First Nations and to make sure they have their place in history and to really to promote peace, friendship and reconciliation. Well, hello. We're here at the beautiful Friends United International Convention Center in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, Canada. And I'm joined today by three fabulous, esteemed guests. Loretta Gould is an artist, as we'll hear. Senator Mary Coyle is here. And Jabel Redbird is here. And they are going to help me tell the story today of this truly special place. Who has, the, who has the deepest roots with this center? I think it's you, Jay, isn't it? I think it's Jay. Oh, Jay, we're nominating you to go first. Phew. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about how you first became associated with Rolf, who, as we know, is the father of Friends United. Uh, yes, I uh, was in Toronto, and I was doing an art show at a powwow. And uh, this gentleman came up to me and um, he asked, he was interested in a painting, six foot by four foot. I told him the price and he, he'll think about it. And then uh, he came back a couple hours later and then he says, I decided I'll buy it. And then uh, I said, I just sold it. So I was kind of surprised. And then after he looked at all the other uh, paintings and the prices and then he said, I'll buy them all. <laughs> and then I was like, whoa. So, and then we started talking and he said, I just bought a painting the previous day of yours. And I always wanted to like, just to meet you. So he just met me the next day. So that's how we met. And then uh, he invited me here. And I was amazed at all the paintings here, the artwork, the totem poles, all the sculptures and uh, yeah. So did the center exist as it is now when you first came here? Yeah, yeah. And how long ago was that? That was uh, probably 2000 and in the beginning of 2012. So I have to ask, were you a little dubious or, or, or um, not suspicious? I don't want to color it, uh, you know, too negatively, but did you believe that he could be for real, this guy? Yeah, I was pretty amazed at the building. I never seen a building this size. And I know of uh, German people collecting native art and I know other artists that went to Germany and sold out their whole shows. So I knew there was a little connection there. And But this was like the biggest co collection I've seen was here. It's, it's pretty staggering when you walk in the door. And I actually, uh, when I came with friends today, I downplayed it and I said, oh, it's really, it's really just, you know, one room and there's a few paintings so that they would walk in the door and go, wow. And really the whole, conver the whole point of this conversation is to give people a taste of it so they'll want to come here 
as well and to spread the word about the art. And Loretta is another of the artists involved and maybe you'll tell us about how you got into this. Well, I met, um, uh, first I met, uh, what was his name? Um, David Brooks. Mm -hmm. And I was selling quilt um, tickets at a um, conference. And I didn't know who Ralph was or the, w what the center was about. And he said, well, I know somebody that will buy all your quilts. And that's how I got into um, this you know, meeting with Ralph. And then about maybe two years into doing the quilts with Ralph, um, the art quilts, then uh, he, um, he asked me to do paintings. And that's when I, I met um, Jay, you know, yes. when I was doing quilts. But what did you say when he asked you to do paintings? I'm not going to wait for a paint to dry. I'm not doing it. That's what I said. <laughs> you, isn't that funny? I, I think of quilting as being something that takes such patience and, you know, it's so intricate. When I did the quilts, I never thought, I never would imagine I would be doing paintings because, you know, my whole world was just quilting. I was doing it for 15 years. My mom was a seamster, so I, you know, sewing was my thing. I, I, that's what I wanted to just do, live in. You know, it's just... Well, and your quilts are so gorgeous. <laughs> They're just you. beautiful works of art, yeah. And when you're that good at something, I can understand, you feel like you're in a groove. Why would you get out of that groove? So you kind of resisted his desire for you to start painting. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, what was your reaction when he came and said, I want to buy all your quilts? Had that happened to you before? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, is he for real? I, no. And then I sat down and I asked him, what do you want from me? Because I, 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 he was just too nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he still is nice, so. But I'm sure that's the question so many artists in particular, and I think I asked that question as well into the ether. Is this guy for real? When I heard about the story and even started talking to him. Um, so it's, it's pretty incredible. Now, he has had Mary, Senator Mary Coyle, f since before she was a senator, and you should be congratulated for this center as well, because I know you played a really pivotal role. Oh, I wouldn't say that, <laughs> but uh, that's why I did. But I've been, <laughs> but I've been, I have been happily, happily honored uh, to be involved, and I, I'm honored to be here with uh, these two outstanding artists. Frankly, and you know, I, it, I wouldn't be comfortable being here without the people who really, uh, along with Rolf and his vision have made this place what it is. You know, it's, it is, as you said, Nancy, it's, it's just, you're awestruck when you walk in to Friends United. And it's because it honors the talent, beauty, and heritage of Canada's Indigenous people in a way that is, is, not, is not saying it, it's showing it. And it's, uh, I think anybody who walks into Friends United has that same feeling. It just, it, it takes your breath away. Because Absolutely. It's not just that it's pretty and beautiful. It's, it is, yeah, it's what I said. It's honoring that beauty uh, in a very special way. And I think, I, I, I would imagine that my, my two friends here, uh, Loretta and Jay, feel that honor for them and their talent when they walk in here and the talent of, I don't know how many artists now, more than 20, I, I'm sure. Uh, I had the good fortune of interviewing um, almost all of the artists who are, are, who are uh, honored and uh, whose work is displayed here. And uh, I think every one of them says the same thing that you know, we're hearing uh, from, from Jay and, and from Loretta and from you, Desi. Is this guy too good to be true? <laughs> like, really? That's, Come on. That's a common sentiment, I think, when people first uh, meet Rolf Bowman. So how did you meet him? How did this come to be? Well, I first met Rolf when I was running the Cody International Institute at St. Francis Xavier University. 
Um, and he was interested in the work of the Institute and was a, a supporter of that. And I used to also be, a, as a member of the university administration, I used to support something called German Day. It was a day when we celebrated German language, culture, history, uh, and accomplishments in the world uh, with the German department and with uh, Professor Marlies Lada, who is also a good friend of, of Rolf Bowman's. And when I stepped down from being director of Cody, I was doing a number of things. And Rolf, at that time, had made a generous donation to the Cody Institute of um, prints of um, many of the Friends United artists. So Cody has a, the Cody Institute has a whole floor where there's this stunning display of art by the Friends United artists. Um, so Rolf knew I was interested. Um, we had the last thing we had started at Cody before I stepped down as director was the Indigenous Women's Program. Uh, and it was kind of bringing Cody back to its work with Indigenous Canadians. And uh, Rolf said, you know, do you want to come and have a little look and get a little closer to what we're doing with Friends United? And I said, oh, I'd be honored to do that. I'd, I'd love to learn more. And so that was the beginning. And so you remember the first day you walked in the door? And did it look like this when you it, showed up? Uh, you know, as, as Jay said, it did look like this. It was, I, well, actually, do you, it, let me just uh, take that back. The first time I walked in here was before it was this. That's what I wondered. Did you see it as a fish, a fish, I, a fish no. hatchery? It, it, it had been a fish hatchery. And uh, Rolf was using it as, as storage. But he took me and showed me a lot of the art that he had started to purchase, David Brooks and others from the early days, and he spun this vision uh, for this center, um, not just as a place to display art, but as a place for people to come together and make art uh, and support each other. It was much more than a, a, a physical place to show the beautiful art off. It was a place to bring people together. He had an interesting vision, and I thought, Oh, that's interesting, Ralph. I don't know how you're going to get from here to that vision. Well, the next time I came, there it was. And every time I come here, and I've been here many, many times, it gets better. You know, there's more art. Uh, there, there are more artists involved. The art gets better. Uh, it, it's, uh, and there are more people brought into the circle of Friends United. It is a circle. You feel the sense of the circle yeah. as soon as you walk in. And in fact, you know, you talk about walking in and seeing it and seeing the representation of, of the honoring of Indigenous First Nations art, but I think you also feel it. Like the moment, I'm telling you, the moment I walked in that front door, the first day I came, I was like, whoa. I felt like I almost had climbed into a swimming pool. It was that tangible feeling of being surrounded by this incredible energy. And maybe it's, it's partly the art, but also partly the fact that people come here together in such you know, goodwill and, and to create. Yes, yes. And, and the, I love the fact that it was a place of, of, so it was a fish hatchery. So there was all of the sense of creation. Yes. You know, and I, I think that's really um, kind of a magical connection. Jay, you come from Lake Huron, is that right? Yeah. And you're Ojibwe. Manitoulin so, Island. Georgian Bay. Georgian Bay, <laughs> Wakwamakan, it's called, yes. So can you tell me about growing up? Um, what can you tell me about your background? What will you tell us about your background? He's very looking. Up, Did yeah. you grow up? Yeah. <laughs> That's what Ralph says. Grow up, Jay. Yeah, grow up, Jay. <laughs> if you're just doing it right now, perhaps you can describe it as you grow up. <laughs> <laughs> well, growing up, I was, uh, I was born in Ottawa. And um, from Ottawa, went to uh, Manitoulin Island, Georgian Bay. And I stayed there till about four years old and then four years old uh, my mother took us to uh, have two sisters took us to Toronto so I've pretty much been raised in Toronto and then I would just go to the reserves you know to see family or family reunion or for powwows and I did live there when I was about 24 
and stayed there and stayed with my uncle, who's an artist, Lee Lambell, and I was learning techniques from him. So, yeah. Was that your introduction to art? Uh, my father's an artist, so I always see him drew and paint and... Uh, I remember watching, he did a, a cartoon for CBC. So that's when I, it first hit me, like the colors that he had. And so I would just use all his colors and start painting. And then a lot of other famous artists, well-known artists came by his house, like Norval Morrison, Benjamin Chichi, Jackson Beardy, all these, uh, 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 Daphne Ojek, all these big time artists. So I started to pick up on it and, uh, took off. So it was like a revolving door of famous artists yeah. coming into your house. Yeah. So I just listened to my dad and them talking, seeing all the pictures and because I, I was still a little boy, so I couldn't, I didn't ask questions. I just look with my eyes and the colors. And then I just, um, I entered the, a medicine lodge called the Medewins. And so those are teachings from uh, 30,000 year old rock paintings throughout uh, Ontario and New York State and Wisconsin, Minnesota. And uh, so I had to go to that lodge and I had to learn some of the language. I had to go fasting. I had to know four sacred songs. I had to speak my language in order to get into the lodge. And um, so did you have to learn it at that stage of your life, your language? Yeah. Yeah. Growing up, my mother, uh, didn't teach us because we were in the city and she said that it would be harder for us to function in the society there. So that's why I didn't get taught. But I learned after. Afterwards, I went to language camp and learning. You know, I'd stay for a couple of weeks at a camp and learn all the language. And so I'm still learning. And uh, yeah. Do you, did you always feel a sense of pride to be Ojibwe, or was there a point in your life when you sort of realized, oh, you know what, this is something that I'm deeply proud of? Yeah. Yeah, I was going through a hard time when I was in my younger days, and then uh, I, um, I woke up with uh, eagle claws clawing my face. So I was like, ooh, and I, was, I remember trying to fight the claws off coming out my face. So then, um, I told my sister that I need to go away and, you know, find, find my culture, my history and my language. So that's what I did. I went away and to learn all about my culture and stuff. And so I found that those eagles were telling me to learn more about your culture, you know. So then I, I started learning and going fasting and, you know, I walk from Kingston to, to the Atlantic Ocean for the water walkers and, then I was head mail walker from Arctic Ocean to Wisconsin. So just to show the world too, to take care of the water in the future. And so I started practicing more. Yeah. Wow. And you sort of acquired a purpose that went with your cultural yeah. background. And my uh, spirit name is Muskeke uh, Noden, which is medicine wind. So when I received that name, I, I was like, boom, I have to share what I know. So that's what I got out of, out of my name, Medicine Wind, that I have to share uh, some of my teachings. I share my techniques to other artists. And then I share, uh, if I see the passion in the artist, then I'll, I'll uh, share the connections to other galleries and uh, other people, collectors. So, yeah. So that eagle was like a wake-up call for you that you needed to fly in a way. I, I love the imagery. Yeah. And that's my clan, Eagle Clan, Megaze Clan. So I, I like to uh, just to share my art with other tribes and other artists, other, you know, they're, they got different teachings, and, but it's pretty much universal, all our teachings. And so I like to do that and help out. You know, I, I learned from just by my eyes, but nobody really talked to me, so... But now I feel I have to talk to the people, you know, just don't show my pictures to them and just help them. Well, and you've got such an authentic voice, so you're well equipped for that. Um, Loretta, let's talk about your background. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> See, we can cut that out, but we might not. 
<laughs> no, tell, tell me what you're willing to about your background and share with us. Well, um, I met my husband when I was 17 or 16, and we got married when I was 17. Mm -hmm. So we, um, I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, and he would go out work. He would, had to go all the way to uh, Boston to find work. Mm -hmm. So a lot, a lot of natives went to Boston just to find work. And um, I, I would only see him like um, maybe, I don't know, two months at a time, and then he would have to go again. Um, so you're Mi'kmaq. Is he Mi'kmaq as well? He yeah. is, okay. yeah. Okay. But he grew up in Boston. Oh, I see. So he went back to his hometown just to find work because he wouldn't find work in good. No, there's really no work in Waikagma. Mm -hmm. And then he stayed home after we had our uh, fourth child. And so because my, um, my daughter didn't know who he was when he came back. Right. So... And that was hard on him, where it was hard on my baby too. So, uh, so he decided to just stay home and find work there. So he was a fisherman there for a while. And, and then he got sick with his air. Um, he had the swimmer's air ache uh, just recently, maybe like, I don't know, maybe seven years, eight years ago. And then I started doing quilts and selling quilts. And that's where the quilting started. Because he got swimmer's ear. Isn't it yeah. funny how life works sometimes? <laughs> and that took you down a path, and you had no idea when you started quilting where that was going to take you. And the reason why I started painting is I, um, I supplied my daughter with anything that she needed, and that's Cheyenne. And um, she was on the opposite side of the table where I was sewing on the opposite side in our kitchen. And my sewing machine broke. It was one, you know, I think it was January or something like that. And it was a storming out. I, I remember and I told Elliot, I said, uh, I think I got to find, you know, somewhere to send my, because uh, it was on warranty. And it took six months for me to get my sewing machine back, which I don't use anymore. <laughs> wow, yeah. And, had, and that, at that time, Rolf had already been encouraging you to start painting. Yeah. Yeah, and same with Elliot and Cheyenne. And then Cheyenne goes, you should just try one painting, Mom. And that's where... <laughs> what was the first painting? Turtle. Your, it was a turtle. Yeah, it was from my dad. Oh. He has my first painting. So why was it a turtle? I love turtles. It just just a turtle thing. I, I always love turtles. Yeah. So you painted what you loved. Yep. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, but it wasn't vibrant as I wanted it. So I spoke with Jay, and Jay, Jay told me what paints to use, because I was using like Dollarama and Walmart stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and wondering why it wasn't. Yeah, why wasn't my time. stuff not bright like Jay's? <laughs> but yeah. But, and did Rolf did Rolf give you paint? Yeah, he supply he happens, supplies yeah. everything for me. Yeah, and the yeah. paint brushes and all exactly. That. Okay, he was doing that then. Incredible. So, so Mary, you um, touched on, before when we were talking, you touched on the fact that it's not just about showing the art, it's about supporting the artists. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Because you've been involved as a board member and you understand the mandate of the place and the heart of it. Yeah, and the, the heart of it is, is really what it is. It's, you know, um, I think all of us who are supporters, um, you know, we we feel like we've been invited in. You know, I'm a, I'm not I don't share the same talents as as my my friends here, you know, Loretta and Jay, but I'm a I'm a great appreciator of of uh, of them and their talents, but also the other uh, people who are part of the circle of Friends United, the other friends. Um, and I think one thing that's really important is to understand that this is not an institution, mm -hmm. right? It's not something that has, somebody had an idea to create an institution and they went and they got money and they created it. Not at all, it's very organic. Mm -hmm. It's very organic, it's very human. So it's very hard to put into the kinds of boxes that people might think of and, and that I'm used to thinking of. Right, so I am a I am a supporter. Um, I'm a cheerleader. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm an appreciator. Uh, so there's a circle of us appreciators uh, who are around Friends United. We're not the artists, but we feel like 
um, we have the privilege of, of, of uh, having an association with this. Rolf, you have to understand, and I'm continuing to understand Rolf, you can't put this man in a box. He's a successful businessman. And one cannot talk about Friends United without talking about Rolf Bowman. Mm -hmm. So he's a very successful businessman. But he wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth, right? He, he's a, he came as a young man to Canada, you know, from post-war, you know, he grew up in post-war Germany, right? And post-war Germany was a tough place to grow up, right? Uh, you know, there, there had to, people had to find a way to get along uh, in the country uh, with people that, you know, uh, I mean, some pretty horrible things happened during that war and in Europe, right? So, so he came from this very special period uh, in, in Europe, came as a young man to Canada, to Cape Breton. And, and, and here he found, you know, a great appreciation for, as, as you said, you know, G Germans love indigenous art, uh, Jay. I think it was more than indigenous art, though, that, what, that Rolf found. Rolf, Rolf found indigenous people. Yes. And so you might think of Rolf Bowman as a patron of indigenous art. But I see him, yes, as that, definitely. <laughs> but as a patron of indigenous people, mm -hmm. uh, which is a different, deeper uh, level of appreciation than just an appreciation of, of the art itself. It's a soulful support. Exactly, and, and he's, you know, of course the art itself is, is, is an expression of the soul, right? But what I, you know, so, he's, so he, what he found here though is this great disconnect. How come Canadian society is not appreciating these people and what they bring uh, to this society? Uh, and so I see him, yes, bringing together artists, um, so helping artists connect with each other. We've heard of, you know, Jay helping. We, we know that Loretta also helps other artists, you know, that artists all come and help each other out, um, help improve uh, the art itself, the art form, um, and the, the products of people's talents. But it's much more than that. I know from talking with Rolf and I know from others that the vision is to change the conversation in Canada and in the world. Uh, and actually, and I'm sure you'll be talking with um, uh, our regional chief, Morley Gugu, later. You know, when I spoke with Morley about this whole effort, he said, Mary, you know, we talk about reconciliation in Canada. Well, this is reconciliation. It's not only seeing, and I remember it clearly, um, Indigenous people as victims, you know, which a lot of people in Canadian oh, society yes. see, but seeing the beauty uh, and the strength and the talent and shining a light on, on that, um, you know, which is, which is frankly more respectful. Um, so yes, it's not easy to put it in a box. Uh, and if you tried to put it in a box, it would die. <laughs> it's, it's a human, organic, uh, coming together of, of people who are talented uh, artists and those around them who are, are there to, to learn, learn from them and, and appreciate. I love um, the word that I really picked out of what you just said was seeing them. And I, I think that's so powerful, you know, not their story, but to see them. Um, and it makes me ask, Jay, do you feel seen by what happens here? Does it make you feel seen as a, a human being and as, a, as an Ojibwe person? Yeah, uh, through the arts. Um, like growing up, that's one of the, uh, the main thing that I felt is to uh, show the world and the different cultures of our artwork because it's so meaningful in our painting. So a lot of... Uh, um, people have acknowledged that and, um, you know, from seeing our art and um, other artists, uh, I know even me that I have been invited to uh, schools, colleges, universities to speak and discuss 
our painting. So that's, uh, I feel that's what, what my job is to do and to teach the young ones too to do that and to share because there's a lot of beauty of our culture and history and language inside our paintings that we could share to the world. So. What, I seem to remember a story about you being a child in school doing art and being discouraged from doing art, is that right? Yeah, I went to uh, college. And uh, so I was 19 years old and I had seven different courses of like line drawing, life drawing, um, so much uh, of, of the courses. So they would give us what to do a subject, but I would always uh, put a native subject in my artwork. So then uh, the other students would look at my mark and they, well, you got an A. And they were like, A, A, I'll get A's or B pluses. And they were asking me, how come you don't get A plus? Because they were, they were saying that I was the best drawer there. So then I asked the teachers, how come, you know, the students are asking me, how come I don't get A plus? And, Everybody's getting A, 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 you know, I get A's. And they all, pretty much all the teachers said that I put too much native stuff into my art. So then I uh, went to the dean and I talked to the dean and I said, that's not right. And um, so he says, well, just hang in there, Jay. We want you to represent the Aboriginal Indigenous students of the college and we're going to tr make you travel throughout Canada at 19 years old and then and then but I still had a problem with all those teachers judging me you know and, and so I quit and I used that as a friendly push positive like you know I wish I could see those teachers now and say hi give them a hug look you know <laughs> and that's what I use from that are they watching right now that's the question I hope so I hope so it's a it's a it's a wonderful story to see you come you know, full circle like that. Yeah, and it's nice too that uh, now I get invited to, you know, like all these big institutions, like my paintings are in Queens Park um, uh, and the law, big huge law firm for uh, Jackman Law Building where all the up and coming lawyers go. And it's good that I could share now and people appreciate it. And they want to learn more about our culture and learn more about the other artists and other tribes and all their teachings. And it's pretty much universal to me, all the teachings and stuff for all cultures. We're all teachers. Yeah, I love that. And I, I love the idea that in a world that is very sort of left brain dominated, you know, sometimes people who are right-brained and creative can grow up going to school and not feel valued and not feel like they're enough because they don't fit into the box, to put it in Mary's language, you know, they don't fit in that right box. And I can relate to that just a little bit. I joke that I have no left hemisphere in my brain. Um, but I'm not nearly, my right brain isn't nearly as developed as yours. But I, I think it's part of why I appreciate your art so much. It speaks to me so much. When I, when I see it and stand before your work, it just makes me feel so much. And that's, that's a beautiful talent to be able to bring into the world and to walk through the world with. Loretta, do you feel valued as an artist? Well, I, I had a similar situation like Jay, where I was growing up and I was in grade nine. And um, my teacher told me that I wasn't going to be anything when I get older. So for the longest time, I was like, I believed him. I didn't, didn't even try. I just did my quilt at home. I didn't, I didn't pursue it. So when I did meet, meet um, uh, David Dober, uh, not David. Um, Brooks. Yeah, David right, Brooks. Yes, um, well, he uh, told me that I, I do good work and he, I should pursue more of it. And when I met Jay, then, then Ralph and Cheyenne and Elliot, they all told me, well, you should start art, you know. And now I do uh, more paintings than, you know, than, than I would do with quilts. So you resisted painting, but I want to know now, how do you feel when you paint? Um, 
happy. My, and, and when I look at the colors in my uh, paintings, I feel happy. And I'm, I'm glad that when other people look at it, I want them to feel the same happiness that I feel when I do my art. That's how it makes me feel. Oh, yeah, <laughs> me too. I'm, I'm a lucky owner of, of one of each of their <laughs> uh, beautiful paintings. <laughs> what do you think it is that speaks to you so much, Mary, about this art? Mm. Well, uh, yeah. How do you how do you actually articulate it? Because it is more a feeling, uh, you know. The the and, the and it's it's deep, really. Um, so I'm very fortunate to. It's spiritual. It's spiritual. We we haven't said the word yet, but yeah. <laughs> but it is. It's it is uh, it is spiritual. It's deep. It's meaningful and it's beautiful and vibrant. Uh, you know which one would hope good spirits would be full of beauty and vibrancy. And so the art is that. And, you know, you know I'm just looking up at a painting of, of Loretta's right, right here, which is, you know, honoring of the missing and murdered Indigenous women. She, she also has art that makes um, really important societal statements. There's one, uh, maybe there's more than one, but there's a very powerful one, um, which is a statement on residential schools as well. Um, the beautiful art that uh, she created for me is uh, called Healing Her, Healing Her Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just, um, it's, it's very female. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of uh, Loretta's art is very female, and uh, she has a lot of human uh, elements in it, but all directly conne connected to Mother Nature. Uh, and so there's a real power in that connection for all of us with nature. And then Jay did this gorgeous painting, which he hasn't told me what the name of it is. I don't know if it has a name. Oh, okay. But, but it's, it, it is a beautiful turtle. Uh, with two, two different birds who are representative of different kinds of leaders. Do you want to speak about it? Yeah, it was a uh, turtle which represents Mother Earth. Exactly. And uh, then I put a side profile of a woman which represents Mary. And then um, Mary's in the Senate, our uh, future prime minister. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> He's your campaign manager. He would do a good job, Mary. So then I put a crane in there, which is a leader outside the village, and then a loon, which is a leader inside the village. So I did that for Mary. Yeah, and it's, it, both of these paintings are, are uh, on Parliament Hill uh, in my office on, uh, in the East Block, and uh, they inspire me every day. So I, I, you know, I can't be at Friends United every day, but I have my friends united with me in my, in my office. And I can tell you that everybody who walks into my office is just in awe. Uh, so there's a, there's a little microcosm going on on Parliament Hill. Mm, thank you. It lets you tell the story. It gives you the opportunity to be telling the story all the time. Exactly. You said the word connection to in relationship to nature and you took the word right out of my mind because I was thinking it's so much for me it's so much about a sense of connectedness um, not just to nature but you know when we talk about First Nations in Canada it's a it's a horrible story of disconnection for a big chapter of Canadian history and uh, you know, I could, I could get teary just thinking about it, but I love what Friends United is doing in terms of creating connection. And you hear it in, in the name itself, Friends United. But when I see this art, I feel connected to the artists. I feel connected to First Nations people. I feel connected to uh, a sense of wholeness for our country for our cultures within our country. And it, it is spiritual in that because that's, that's a lot to accomplish with a piece of art. To stand in front of a piece of art and to feel all that is like, wow. Especially given where we come from, yes. you know, which, which you've spoken about. 
you know, what your experience at, at, at school, you know. Um, I mean, I don't know about you, Nancy, but I didn't know a whole lot of Indigenous people growing up. Uh, you know, and there was there was not a lot of connecting, and I'm, I'm sure even in Waikagama, where where you're from, there wasn't that much connecting. Um, you know, and it's it's a moment, it's a moment in our society, and who who better who better to bridge uh, than than those people who have these you know God given gifts, you know of of the of art, you know. There's no better way of connecting, right? Art, art is is a beautiful bridge between peoples, and um, and I think that's what you know. Friends United is, you know, between artists, of course, like, like you. Which I mean, it makes it the individual artists themselves are powerful and talented and 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 uh, you know strong in their own right. But bring those bring bring those forces together, uh, you see something really magnificent emerging. And I think, you know, I just hope that more people get to benefit from what all of us get to benefit from as being part of Friends United. Well, I think the image of a bridge is so powerful and it's, it's between artists, it's, but it's also a bridge from prejudice to reverence, if you will, you know? And I, and I would like to think that our society is, is moving across that bridge to a sense of, of revering our past and our, our First Nations people. Do you, do you feel a shift, Loretta? Do you, am, I being, am I being too optimistic and Pollyannish when I say that, or do you feel a shift is happening? I do, I do, yeah. Um, it's, I don't even know what to say about it, but I do feel it. I, I feel like more people are getting more, um, Native people are getting more recognized now than they were like back 10 years ago. And, and it's a good thing because <laughs> we have a lot to say. And do you feel a sense of the responsibility of that? Because what you're doing is contributing to that. I do feel responsible for um, some things that I, I speak about, like for murdered and mis missing Indigenous women or um, suicide, that, that one right there. Uh, it's about suicide and being depressed, um, and that one right there. It's there's so many uh, commu communities that are um, suffering from suicide and uh, depression, and nothing's really done about it. Uh, what can we do about it? And that that's all we can do is just try and be there for and just listen to them. That's all we can do. Give them a voice. Give them a voice. And is that becoming a, a purpose in your life? It has, yeah. It, it wasn't when I first started this, um, but now, um, especially missing and murdered Indigenous women are more uh, in my life. There's, there's a lot of people that message me about it um, and that I should be speaking about it more or if I have more paintings about it and um, stuff like that. But I feel like I should do more um, for the depressed or suicidal people, you know, that I, I think I should speak more about them and let them have a say or, you know, could just come out of their shell and, and be helped. It's like you're shining a light, mm -hmm. a bit like a lighthouse. Mm -hmm. A beacon. Mm -hmm. That's what she is. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's inspiring. Jay, what about you? Do you feel there's a shift in society? Do you notice a, a difference um, from when you grew up? Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, tell me about tell me about your experience. I see a lot of uh, uh, native people that were complaining about uh, the past, and uh, but there's a lot of good opportunities now for them. So, like for me, for instance, um, I had it okay, you know with my father being the uh, vice president of Canada of all the natives and president of uh, Ontario and uh, hanging out, writing movie scripts and songs and poems. And so I had it okay for me, but there, there's other times, you know, when I had it rough and, but I just uh, switch it. I always switch a negative into a positive, right? Life's short, 
So it's who you are. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we love about you, Jay. So I'm always laughing and thinking positive, and and uh, our our people are uh, getting recognized. And uh, even like I, I remember, I went to a protest, and uh, all the farmers approached our uh, our our lodge, the Medewins, and asked us to uh, come and help protest for the waters because they're going to do. Uh, destruction of the waters there. So we all went and all the farmers were all amazed that all these Aboriginal people came and uh, we, stopped, we stopped that from damaging the water for them. And then so I noticed a lot of the uh, Native people are, uh, are getting good opportunities now. You know, like I went to a store and, uh, and uh, a person came behind me and says, excuse me, are you Native? And I said, yes. He goes, I want to be your friend. Do you have a status card? No. <laughs> <laughs> Save tax. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't your sparkling personality they wanted? <laughs> but I have met people too, like even on, when I worked in the movie industry, a lot of those people shook my hand and said, I apologize for the ignorance of us judging your people. And by meeting you is... You, you, there must be a lot of nice Native people. So that's a nice feeling when they say that to me, yeah. That's pretty powerful. And, and then you're being a lighthouse, right? You're, you're showing the world and helping people change their ideas. I always think, you know, people have prejudice against or, or hate or whatever negative emotion it is uh, against a people or a culture, and it's just fear because they don't understand it. It's usually it's ignorance. No, it, it's, that's it. It's, it's, fear is based in ignorance. And as soon as you can show them the light, as it were, if we're going to keep on with that uh, metaphor, all of a sudden, you know, it changes everything for them. And they want to be your friend. Like Danny DeVito. Is it right that Danny DeVito has one of your paintings? Yeah. How did that come about? Uh, I was working on a film called Death to Smoochie with uh, Danny DeVito, and then his uh, bodyguard got sick, so I was his bodyguard for about three days. Then we started chatting and talking, and then uh, word gets around because I started painting, so they would come and they would commission me paintings, and, and so Danny even said, um, you don't belong here because Hollywood is a small circle, and you belong to the outside and share your paintings to the whole world. And then so I got offered to do a film and then I thought, ooh, that's gonna be like five months, a lot of hours. And then I thought, oh, or I could listen to what people are saying, open your own gallery and pursue and pass on your paintings, share. So I did that and then that's when it really took off. So a lot of those film people told me, it was a nice job, you know. But you recognized there was a sense that I could keep doing this nice job, but this over here, this path is a calling. Yeah. And if I keep doing this job, I am, my opportunity cost is that I'm not following my true path. Yeah. And here you are. Yeah. And that's when I basically pretty much around that time, I got my spirit name. So I had to uh, do a fast. I did a three day fast out in the woods and first I did a sweat sweat lodge and then the uh, medicine man smoked his pipe and said you have to go out for three nights so I went out for three nights and and then when I came back I had to do another sweat and then he smoked the pipe again and he says your your spirit your Indian name is um, medicine wind so then that's when I thought that's when I have to share my work and that's what I did you're a healer in a way yeah, I do it through the paintings, yeah. Like, it's nice when people will ask uh, if they could drum to the painting, and so there'll be women drumming to my painting, and and then some people will be crying and tearing up, and uh, like I did a painting um, to Amnesty International about 12 years ago for the murdered missing women. That's when it started getting recognized. And then after that, then it started to take off. So I was happy to be 
part of the uh, the first uh, murder uh, missing women. You know, you were like a catalyst, really, to get that going. Yeah, amazing, and it seems to me that when I um, look at a piece of art. If it's like an energy is transferred through it. So if it has been created with a sense of a pure sense of passion, if you if you understand what I mean, then that comes through it to the, to the person looking at it. And and so, you know, you've talked about the spiritual nature of art. Um, I really feel like it communicates if if someone does art for money, I don't think it carries you know, no matter how nice the colors are, I don't think it carries that kind of energy through it. So that's part of what I love about this place. And, and I want to ask you, if, if you can, to just each of you tell me what you think is really the crux of what makes Friends United so important or special. Uh, to me, it's um, more special. I would say. It is important, but um, the being special where I get to meet um, Jay, I, I wouldn't get to meet Jay and Helena if, I, if it wasn't for Friends United. Or um, Mary. Mary. I met Mary through um, doing a painting for Buffy St. Marie. That's and right. and um, when she was working at the, uh, as a um, professor, was it? And um, in, in order for me to be here, I had to meet all those people and have those people um, to be part of my life to, um, to have what I'm, what I'm about now today. Every step has yes. taken you along the path to where you stand today, sort of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Mary? Well, I'm, I'm actually not going to contradict what you said, Nancy, about making money. Um, it, oh, I think it's okay to make money. Yeah. I just mean if that's, the, if that's your main motivation. Sure. Uh, everybody needs to make money. So, I mean, I think I've said a lot about what to me is, is special and important about, about Friends United. Um, you know, the bringing forth um, and shining a light on, on Indigenous people, their talents, the beauty, the 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 traditions, um, you know, the the uh, heritage, um, you know, everything, uh, the connection to nature, um, all of that the, through the arts is 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 critical. The human element is the best part of Friends United, right? It's 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 it people coming together um, in recognition and support of each other, uh, and that's a, that's a beautiful thing. I do also, not, not instead, I do also think there is a, uh, something very important that we haven't spoken about, and that is the economic benefit um, to individuals um, and to th this very important sector in our, in our community, which, you know, which is incredible artists, but now incredible artists making a decent living. Yes. You know, um, yeah. we all need to earn a living and uh, Friends United, not just through Rolf Bowman purchasing art, that's, that's fantastic that's and, <laughs> and that's, that's absolutely terrific, but also, you know, people sharing um, ideas with each other on, uh, and supporting each other to earn a better living. You know, and, I, and these two can talk much better about that than, than I am because everybody needs to be able to make a living, you know, and, and these two, um, as well as other artists associated with Friends United, are incredible role models, right? So a young person can say, oh, look what they're doing. They're creating fantastic art, and not only that, but their art is being appreciated. And hmm, maybe I could see myself doing that. So I think there's something that reverberates not just today, but well into the future beyond what we know of as Friends United here today. Absolutely. It's sort of the heart of being a social entrepreneur. I think a lot of social entrepreneurs would do what they do for free because it's rooted in passion, 
but they get they learn that oh it's also okay to make money and it's and I should be it's necessary that's right and and to have your gifts recognized you know uh, you're not a lawyer a lawyer gets paid a lot of money for their gifts you have different gifts that should be recognized economically financially as well and I I absolutely love that and as you say it's showing young people away. Exactly. exactly. So just imagine, you know, we're talking about today's circle, which is Friends United. I see, you know, like ripples coming out from Friends United well, in, well into the future, not just in the lives of the people that are in the inner circle today, but I could, I, you know, we're already seeing it happen with Next Generation and others in the community who are saying, oh, hey, me too. Uh, and, and that's a positive thing. Beautiful. Jay? I've told Ralph many times that when I came here, like I was saying before, I walked from Kingston to the Atlantic Ocean for the water. As we got closer to this territory, the, uh, we noticed like our, our lead walker, Josephine and her sister were, and me, we, we noticed that there weren't hardly any indigenous people's coming on our walk and it was mostly the uh the white people coming and asking if they could walk with us and one of the ladies broke down she's from new brunswick and she was crying because she was trying to call these communities to help us walk our our peoples and but we noticed that there was too much christianity involved of the tribes around here so when I seen Friends United and Ralph and David Brooks, um, these are like all old teachings, like there's nothing uh, Christian about it. And so then I noticed like Loretta learning from her husband, Elliot, and uh, the teachings. So it's good that I see Ralph is getting these artists to, to learn more about their teachings so they could put it in their paintings. And then Loretta is teaching that and her, her uh, husband, Elliot, to their kids. And then it's picking up slowly here, I see that. And the other artists like Darren learning and singing to the language and uh, Darren Julian, and uh, they're learning more about the culture. So I think uh, Ralph helped a lot with that for them to get more involved with the teachings and put it in side the paintings. So I really see that in Friends United. And plus Mary was saying about we're all together and we share I ideas and um, yeah, techniques and you know, I'll see something from Loretta and then I'll, I'll just like kind of steal the idea. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> At least he's honest, Loretta. You know, that's good. I'm glad I encourage him. <laughs> but it's good like that, that we could all share, right? Yeah. Well, I, I love, and, and I think when I first heard the name, I, I thought, now I wonder why it's called Friends United. It seemed like sort of a strange name to me at first, to tell you the truth. And now I so get it. Like, as you say, this is so much. It's about human connection, so much. And... Um, in terms of creation, I even understand there is a baby that's, uh, that came out of this. <laughs> Can we tell that story before we wrap up? Because I think it's a lovely, a lovely uh, yeah, bit of icing on the top of the cake. Well, I went to go see Ralph, and I, for years we were trying to have another baby. Uh, for like maybe, I don't know, 11 years, I think, or 10 years. And I went to go see Ralph, and Ralph said, well, do you have anything for sale? And he, um, he bought, uh, uh, I think it was like four of my paintings at the time. Yeah. And um, I went to the office where my tools would get on done. And sure enough, four months after, I got pregnant <laughs> <laughs> with my husband. <laughs> and so is Rolf the godfather? <laughs> <laughs> or, or reasonable facsimile. We are very thankful that um, he helped us out with um, Montana. But yeah, Montana's a handful right now. <laughs> Montana. Montana should be the mascot for the Friends United Center. Montana rough gold, right? Rough gold. Yes, exactly. 
Thank you all so much for joining me today. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you really think we should hit on before we wrap up? Just very grateful to um, Mr. Bowman, Ralph, you know, bringing us all together. You know, that was his vision, right? And uh, yeah, he's been wonderful to all of us. Yeah, I think we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Ralph. He's pretty extraordinary. He is. I like to also, what Ralph is doing is uh, to give the artist confidence to, to travel, like to do art shows. You know, like I, I've done Miami Beach, I did West Coast, and so I want these artists too to do the same, to spread their wings and to soar, show the art everywhere, right? Yeah. It makes me think of the expression, a rising tide lifts all boats. And that's what Ralph wants all the artists to do, is to soar. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you.